Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the Dow Jones transportation average, and we've been watching this one fairly closely just because it was indicating that it was ready to roll over and break down through. Now, you can see this trend line drawn from late 2012 with a series of touch points has clearly now broken out, broken down. Uh, not only has it broken down through this trend line, but it's actually broken down through this support line here of the last low that it had. So we may be looking at a serious downturn in the stock market. That wouldn't surprise me because they use deflation scares to crush the precious metals and to ramp up their next round of quantitative easing. And of course, everything changes once those things happen. So you can see here on this MACD support line, you can see that clearly violated. Nothing like it except for back in late 2011. So this is a pretty serious market thing going on. Now, I want to spend the rest of the time on this. Well, let's, let's pull up the silver chart because there's really not a lot going on there. We're still in that bottom forming process. You can see we do have a crossover here on the MACD for the daily. So we we're significantly below the zero line and we're crossing up. Is it the bottom? We still don't know that. I'll pull in the volume and get an idea if that shoulder is forming. It still kind of looks like it. Um, actually, we go out to 30. Um, so not a lot of volume today, but we do have that rounding up effect. We did get a higher move than that spike there and then a sell off. So it, it's still doing that kind of rounding up formation. Now I've pretty much I may be wrong on this one. It may go down. I, I've pretty much done my stacking for this. I don't really have a lot of dry powder left on this move. So I did most of my stacking. I did some here and some here. And uh, I don't know. You'll have to look up the post. I don't remember. But uh, when I could see those half ounce horses for twelve fifty or something and the two ounce horses for 45 bucks, that was a that was a go for me. So we'll see if they come back if Provident gets more of them. Uh, when Atmex went ahead and moved to the new pricing range of $18, $19 on the half ounce and about 56 bucks on the two ounce, that indicated to me that maybe they can't source those anymore. Uh, Provident seems to have a source. I don't know what their source is. We had 2,000 of the half ounce come in. They're all gone. We had 200 of the two ounce come in multiple times. They're all gone. So. It's, it's looking like the type of bottom I've seen before where I, I've got my coins and I don't see my coins again. So I'm, I'm about 70 to 80% leaning towards that bottom sign. Now let's get over and look at this GT stock here because I'm going to spend the rest of the time looking at this GT Advanced Technologies. Now let's clear off the indicators. This, If you're not familiar with this, this was a, a company that was a pro pro provider for Apple of these screens. Supposedly was going to be on the new iPhone. I'm not really sure. I don't know all of the facts of it yet. But you can see here this unbelievable price collapse that we have in this stock. And we're talking about a 93% decline. We'll see that when we start looking at the news stories. And you can see kind of an echo, uh, pre-echo move here. Um, something that's very important is this gap, a gap down, and then you can see kind of just this failing flag type of thing, just falling, and then there we go. There's your 93% decline. So what's going on? Well, the first thing to think about is that paper can simply evaporate overnight. Again, this is a one day move. Let's go to the daily chart and take a look here. This is a one day move. So you can see that that stock opened at 11 bucks and closed at about 81 cents. That's it. 
That's all your money gone. Poof, it's gone. That's what happens with paper. Now, obviously, that can't happen with real assets, with the metals, with anything that's a real asset. So let's dig deeper and take a look at this because this is fascinating to me. I like to investigate these when they happen. We're going to start off with Zero Hedge, and this is uh, from yesterday. Curious why you lost all your money on GTAT? Sorry, the bankrupt company won't tell you. Yeah, this is a unique one here where they actually requested the bankruptcy judge seal the information. So this one, this is a crazy one, but let's read a little bit here. Before the Fed's minutes unleashed the biggest stock market roller coaster seen since the summer of 2011, by far the most notable event was Monday's Lehman-like bankruptcy of Apple's sapphire glass producer GT Advanced Technologies, which without warning went from market cap of $1.5 billion to zero in the span of seconds after a market trading halt. Much to the shock and dismay of its shareholders, none of whom had expected any bad news, let alone a bankruptcy filing, the company decided to add insult to injury when instead of at least providing an explanation why over a billion in equity evaporated, all it had to say was, GTAT is facing a severe liquidity crisis due to circumstances that will be more fully described at the hearing on the first day pleadings. The first day pleadings were today and everyone was eagerly looking forward to the biggest instant repricing of risk value since Lehman bonds went from 80 to 8 in one weekend. And there's the chart. And of course, this chart's going to show you that the bond price um, is dramatic move as well as the equity price is uh, some pre-information. We're going to see that when we look at the insider activity. In fact, this was worse than Lehman. At least their one knew what happened. Instead, in addition to the above-mentioned insult and injury, what everyone and especially the shareholders got was nothing short of a slap in the face when the company argued on Thursday that it could not reveal why it filed for bankruptcy and asked the court to keep crucial documents sealed. So think about that. Not only did you lose all your money, but they're not going to tell you why you lost all your money. That's a secret. <laughs> so this this is the kind of stuff you can't make up. Now, I've talked about this stuff before. Uh, just the craziness of some of this stuff like uh, Neil Cash and Kerry being the guy that was in charge of the bailouts. Lloyd Blankfein is the banker that's in charge of City. So even their names, Bernie Madoff, he made off with all the money. This it's it's like a big show. So I wanted to show you this real quick before we dig further into the facts here. And I posted on Zero Hedge on this art article asking where the SEC is. Of course, where is the SEC? Nowhere to be found. But here's your here's your head of the SEC, and there's a very stately Obama announcing his new SEC chief. Well, maybe it's not me. I, I, I'm not sure, but this kind of strikingly looks like Mr. Magoo to me. If you remember back in the day, Mr. Magoo was the cartoon, hilarious cartoon, about Mr. Magoo who was basically completely blind, but he was convinced that he could see something. So he walked around and stumbled in all kinds of um, hilarious situations so that apparently is the person that we have in charge of the SEC Mr. Magoo and uh, if you remember the story back from 2010 uh, the SEC porn problem official surfing sites during the financial crisis the Securities and Exchange Commission is the sheriff of the financial industry looking for crimes such as Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme, but a new government report obtained by ABC News concluded that some senior employees spent hours on the agency's computers looking at sites such as Naughty.com, Skankwire, and YouPorn as the financial crisis was unfolding. So... Why do we have all the head people of the SEC looking at pornography? Well, for one thing, the 
the agency is run by Mr. Magoo. And that's a pretty obvious hint there that they don't have any intent of seeing what's actually going on. In fact, they're going to gloss that over. So we have, here's the announcement today, one of the first class action suits. You can see that Ganey, McKenna, and Eggleston announces a class action lawsuit in New York, August or October 10th, 2014. Ganey, McKenna, and Eggleston announces that a class action lawsuit had been filed in the United States District Court for District of New Hampshire on behalf of all persons who purchased or otherwise acquired GT Advanced Technologies, Inc. securities during the period between November 5th, 2013 and October 6, 2014. And what's the basis? The complaint alleges that during the class period, defendants misrepresented and or concealed the company's cash position, expected cash position and revenues, ability to meet the milestones under a critical agreement. So with Apple, of course, a big fraud. That's what they're alleging. Still, the SEC is nowhere to be found. You can go to Google and type in this uh, ticker symbol, GTAT, and then SEC, and all you're going to find are the filings. There's nothing from the SEC. Mr. Magoo can't see anything. So let's dig deeper here. Let's look at the insider trades, okay? So if you go to Yahoo, there's a lot of things you can click on. You can click on the insider roster. This Gutierrez character is actually the CEO. I don't know why he's listed as an officer, but he's, he's listed as a CEO when you go to the profile, click. And you can see here, here's the shares he's dumped. So uh, remember that the stock fell from about 11 bucks to nothing. And the peak in the stock, well, let's pull it all the way out just to see. Because I think this was a stock. No, th- this was the peak right in here. So the trading range for the peak was about 15 bucks to 20 bucks. There was a good uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six months to unload the stock at these high prices. Well, we can see here that uh, you, I don't know if you've looked at these before, but here's how it works. On Yahoo, and this is uh, what is required to be filed with the SEC, and uh, it comes out later, but eventually the truth comes out, is they, they show the number of shares, they show the stock, they show the transaction. Now, a lot of these, you'll see the option exercised, okay? So this is the price that this executive is given the stock at. They're allowed to buy it at this low price. And you can see here's option exercise at $0 per share. Then they sell it at the market price. That's how these Wall Street executives get paid. Uh, Their pay actually as a percentage is a very, very small percentage of what they actually earn. Most of the money they earn is the stock that they get. They drive the price of the stock up. They unload. So you can see here 143,000 shares were sold at 17 bucks and there's about a $2 million dollar net proceeds actually proceeds the net proceeds are going to be subtracting out whatever that option was exercised at you can see though a lot of these options are actually exercised at zero so this is how these corporate people and you can see right here company relationship you can see these people have multiple boards they sit on that's very common some of these people when you're talking about the big dogs uh, you'll see sometimes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boards that they have uh, stock in. These are the connected people. These are the Masons. These are the Knights of Malta. These are the Illuminati. They all enrich each other and, and glad hand and scratch each other's back. That's how it works. So this guy, I don't have the time to add this all up, but extracted probably tens of twenties of whatever millions of dollars of this company before it basically went belly up. And they said to him, sorry, the money's gone. And you can see right now the market cap is 111 million, and that's based on probably the prior one. Dropped another 37%. So this is going to zero. It's going to a penny, and the market cap will be nothing, and the CEO will have walked off with many times the value of the entire company. 
So let's go and look at the major holders of this company because this is going to be something that is important going forward. The top one here actually holding 7.9% of the company is Wellington Management. Then we've got the second here of Systematic and we've got Vanguard and FMR. So you've got Vanguard, number one um, mutual fund, if not number one or number two, and there's FMR, that's Fidelity. And then you got BlackRock. You got BlackRock here and you got BlackRock here. So BlackRock, yeah, they're supposed to be the smartest guys in the room. Why did you have 5% of a company that went to nothing? So, and then here's your top mutual fund holders. You can see there's an ETF in there. Then there's Fidelity, Vanguard, Vanguard, the Russell 2000. Don't worry, they'll be dropped out of the Russell 2000. Uh, they'll replace it with someone else. And then Vanguard, Hartford, Fidelity, and Vanguard again. So that's the money they're stealing. And let's go and look at Wellington because these were the guys that held 7.9, almost 8% of the company. And remember, I, I'm not checking the, the float, but sometimes these numbers are even higher when um, not all the shares are released. So that's a big chunk of the company. Well, let's go to Wellington, who we are, who is this Wellington management? Well, here's your explanation, who we serve. We serve an extremely diverse mix of investors located in over 50 countries. Remember the financial crisis when the European countries, their retirement funds were, were stolen when these companies went from very billions of value to zero overnight. And uh, these European municipalities lost everything. Well, it's happening again. Our clients include defined benefit and defined contribution plans. So these are by law. These are actually regulated. Financial intermediaries, wealth managers, endowments. There's your colleges, foundations insurance companies there's your annuities central banks and sovereign institutions and private investment offices so these are the really smart guys so you tell me why did the really smart guys lose 93 percent of the value of what they invested in in one day now by the way this was also mentioned that this was something that kramer was pumping i don't i haven't researched that to determine whether that's true or not. It wouldn't surprise me at all. That's the way Wall Street works. They're gonna pump the paper, they're gonna dump. It's a pump and dump, that's how it works. So this is the reality of Wall Street. Now, I think this, is, this actually um, is relevant, even though it's a tiny company relatively, but we're in the beginning of this type of rolling over deflationary stage. We saw this in 2008. We saw the dominoes start to fall very, very rapidly. That might be what's happening this time. Now you can see the move in the oil price was absolutely phenomenal. We're starting to roll down in oil here fairly seriously. So is this a precursor of some big, huge deflationary crash? It could be, but for silver stackers, it really doesn't matter because the price is so low at this point. As I pointed out before, my coins are gone. Um, I'm out of dry powder, so that's uh, good timing. But uh, even if those coins come back in, I don't think you're ever going to see them at the price they were again. I think that we're, if not, if the bottom has not been put in place at this point in time, then we are very, very close to that bottom being put in place for physical silver. And there's no question when you look at how paper can go to zero, literally overnight, and Mr. Magoo doesn't see anything, you know that that is not an investment that you want to hold. You just want to keep stacking. And we'll talk to you next time.